Welcome to the Business Speak Podcast, where we take everything you need to know about being successful in business and make it easy to understand. Whether you're a longtime business owner, newer to this entrepreneur stuff, or hoping to run your own company in the future, you've come to the right place. Featuring your host, professional accountant and business guru, Mr. Chill. So relax and have some fun with us as we journey through business speak, the language of business simplified. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Business Speak podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Chill, and I'm excited you're joining us today. Uh, Last episode, we brought on a gentleman who walked us through the ins and outs of sales. And when you're going to focus on revenue and sales, it's primarily because you want to grow your business. Today, we're going to talk about a topic uh, that is very much connected to that concept. Again, most of you have either recently started a business or are thinking of starting a business or in some process along that path. And once you've done so, or as you begin to, you're going to be like, I need money. I need income. Uh, Help me grow my business. And so last week, we talked about a lot of concepts on the revenue side. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that I think is really cool, but I feel I'm not very good at. And hence, I brought a little subject matter expert with me into the studio today. Uh, His name is Lawrence Roberts. Uh, Lawrence, feel free to say hi. Hi. There you go. That's all you get. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Just brought him in to show his smiley face and say hi. Anyways, uh, I have a bio here to read for uh, about Lawrence to introduce him to you in a moment. Uh, Once I read that bio, you'll understand a little bit more about why I brought him in on this particular topic. So the title of our episode today uh, is Business Networking, A Key to Business Success. Now, I purposely worded it as not the key to business success because that seems a little daunting to narrow down just the one primary thing. I think there's a lot of things that go into business success. But being able to network as a business owner and or a key executive in a corporation you're asked to help run um, Business networking is going to be a crucial area that you're going to want to understand, you're going to want to get into if you want to find great success in your business ventures. So I'm going to introduce Lawrence with the bio, official bio, and then I'm going to let you know a little bit of background because Lawrence and I have known each other in a variety of capacities for quite some time now. So Lawrence Roberts is a networking master. His words, not mine, but I wholeheartedly agree. He prides himself on being the one you go to when you need something because he has connection in almost every major city in Canada. He likes meeting new people, building relationships, and helping those people create their own network of great contacts. He has been doing this with his own trade businesses, and then he made it his professional career when he purchased his first BNI franchise in Saskatchewan. And we'll talk a fair bit about what BNI stands for and how that relates to what we're talking about today uh, throughout the episode. BNI is the world's largest business networking program with over 1,000 regions worldwide. Lawrence was the region owner for Saskatchewan and later acquired Manitoba and Ontario Central North. Lawrence ran his franchises and found success even through COVID. He has been recognized globally and nationally for his accomplishments including Franchise of the Year in 2018, 2019, and 2021. He's been invited as a content expert to speak on the BNI Global Stage on many occasions, as well as the School of Business in Saskatoon. He has been involved in several committees, including the Saskatoon Immigration Council and the Founders Circle. Now, outside of the networking guru, Lawrence is also a family man, He's been married to his amazing wife, Brittany, for almost 20 years. Brittany, if you end up listening to this podcast, that word was intentional. He could have just said his wife, but he said his amazing wife. So just so you know. And he has five daughters ranging in age from 16 down to eight. He enjoys watching NBA basketball, camping with his family, and a passion him and I both share of riding motorcycles. He is a serial entrepreneur and loves to hear about other people's business journey. So reach out to him and share. So as you can see, 
when we're going to dive into a topic of business networking, we need a networking master, and that's exactly who we brought on today. Now, Lawrence, I have a couple of things I'd be curious for you to elaborate on. I know they're not the direct topic for today, but it would help people get to know you a little bit more. I highlighted one of the phrases here that I think all of us would want in our life, at least one person like this, probably multiple people like this, but being the one that people go to when they need something. Hmm. So I guess one of my questions for you on that, if you want to elaborate a bit is, first of all, is that like fun for you or is that like pressure? Like, oh no, people expect me to always have the right person for the right job. Tell me a little bit about how that feels and how that came to be. Well, I've I've often said to people that I'm I'm not really good at anything, but I know somebody who is good at everything. And so I I've never said to somebody that I'm the best at this, I'm the best at that, I'm the best at this. But I've always found uh, I found value. It made me feel good when when I could be the one to connect you to the right person. When you have a need, I like to be the one that says, "Well, I got a guy or I got a girl. I have a person." You know, I. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I have a high sense of pride in that. And, and it, it's fulfilling to me when, when somebody has a need and I can fulfill it. And, and because I'm, I'm not necessarily very good at anything per se, but I am good at connecting people. And so when I can use my, my skill um, to provide value or to, or to help somebody in need specifically, um, I don't know. I feel good about that. So uh, to be able to have those connections and to be... Uh, to be a friend or to be someone that you can depend on to get you those good connections is, is really important to me. Uh, it's not something that I have high pressure, high pride, because if somebody's like, oh, do you have a good this person? And I don't, I usually know somebody who does know that person. So it's very, very rare where somebody comes to me and I, I can't help them. And, and what I loved is, is because I was able to build that value or um, kind of that resource for lots of people whenever they actually needed my particular services. So in some of my other businesses, I was just their go-to person, mm-hmm. right? And so it was not only helping everybody around me, but but in the end, it also helps my business too. So I I, I like being that person. And so my, my friends, my family, other contractor friends, uh, they'll often reach out to me and say, hey, I'm stuck. I don't know who to do, what to work with or whatever. Well, I have someone that can probably help you. So, like I said, I think everybody probably wants at least one person in their life who is that. I don't know who to reach out to, but this person will. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's pretty cool. Now, you mentioned in your bio here that you've been invited to speak on the BNI Global Stage as a content expert. So, we're going to talk about uh, BNI for a a moment. This is not necessarily a plug for BNI, though one of the... uh, Areas where Lawrence and I got to work together really closely was when we were both involved in the same BNI chapter. So, Lawrence, for the sake of people that have never heard the acronym BNI or maybe have heard of it but don't really know what it is or anything about it, just maybe give like a high level overview of what's BNI, why did you decide to get involved with it, and sort of how it's been a help to you over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so BNI stands for Business Network International. And it is a global organization that helps businesses to build and create relationships, um, provide education and training on on things like leadership, connecting, networking, all those things that as business professionals, we we know are important, but we also have a really hard time carving out time in our lives to be able to to build those relationships, to get to know other people. And so BNI is a is a program or uh, a network organization that that helps business professionals, sales professionals um, get connected and build those relationships, mostly locally. But once you're a member of BNI, it also connects you to the other 300,000 plus BNI members there are around the world. Mm-hmm. And so we like to say in BNI, you can travel almost anywhere in the world, and you'll have a you'll have a network. You have a friend connection, you know, like a business family wherever you go. Um, so it's it's powerful, and uh, and one of my favorite stories is uh, one of my buddies that uh, I've known for years lives in Sweden, and he was posting on Facebook, "Hey, I uh, I need a plumber, and I don't know who to call or whatever." And I was like, and I and within like like I think it was probably 15 minutes, I I had gone onto the BNI website, I'd looked up uh, plumbers in Stockholm, 
and uh, had sent him a contact. And he mentioned me, but he's like, how the heck do you know? <laughs> how the heck do you know a plumber in Sweden? And so, and, it, and honestly, I'd never met that person, but to be a member of BNI, you have to go through, uh, you know, the, the checks to make sure that you're good at what you do and that you're following proper business protocol and, and licensing and stuff like that. So the likelihood of him having a good experience with this plumber that I've never met is a lot higher than pulling you know, a random plumber off of a Google website searching. or whatever, yeah. um, because because they're a member of BNI, and so so having that network built in uh, as part of your business uh, to me added a lot of value. So so I started in BNI with you, and uh, and then loved it so much that I ended up making that my career for a while. Okay, yeah. and so you talk about the value of BNI to your average business owner, but this. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I remember you saying to me on multiple occasions before you decided to make BNI your career, you were in there for a different business. You're like, I think I like BNI more than I like my own business. <laughs> so, what do you think it is that you have such a passion for that kind of thing? What what draws you to it? Do you think? Well, I think it is those connections um, and those building relationships. So I'm I'm naturally a shy person. I like to I like to be alone. I'm I'm naturally introverted, and so right. when there was a program out there that that kind of forced me to break out of my shell and and really helped me facilitate that relationship growth, I loved it. And and I was making those connections and I was doing a lot of that networking stuff before uh, before I was introduced to BNI but I didn't understand that that's what that that's what it was okay. you know I would always someone would call to me or I'd be working on a project and I'd be like oh I really need a connection for that so I would go and I'd talk to them and I'd say how would you feel about you know building up a, a trade relationship partnership or whatever um, you know, I own a roofing company. I need a good contact for eaves troughing, or I need a good contact for windows and doors. And so I was building this network around myself before I was introduced to BNI, and it was fun for me. And so when the opportunity came around for me to make BNI my career, and I could do that full time, that seemed way funner than <laughs> than helping people put roofs on their house and uh, and things like that. So, so you uh, could say it was the shingle best decision you ever oh, made. Oh yeah, I guess I could. Yeah, if I needed to. <laughs> Um, but but it's true. I I I was introduced to BNI and fell in love with it uh, and decided to make it my career for uh, almost seven years. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the founder of BNI at some point. Um, I've got a quote or two from him that we may use later on. Uh, his name is Dr. Ivan Meisner. He's got a pretty fascinating story and kind of a cool background of how or why BNI came to be. I think it ties into something you said in your bio, but I'll ask you because maybe I'm off base here. You talked about being on some some committees, including something called the Founders Circle. Is that related to BNI or what is the Founders Circle? What do you do there? Yeah, so what that is, is um, so BNI is organized into regions. There's about a thousand regions in the world, a little, maybe more like 1100 regions. And um, when a region is doing well and progressing and you meet a certain criteria, uh, they, uh, they invite you to be a member of the Founders Circle. So what it is, is they want you to be, they want about 50 representatives from different countries around the world. And those 50 representatives are kind of the, the filter for the organization. So the corporate organization comes up with decisions and decides what they feel would be a good fit for the uh, for BNI globally, they take it to the founders circle and we say, oh, that would be a good idea in Canada. Or maybe the the German executive director uh, says, no, you know, that might not fit as well in our culture. Or in South Africa, they might say, oh, that sounds like a good idea, but with a little bit of a twist to it, right? So, so we can kind of give a global feedback narrative on what we think would fit in our specific areas. So, um, so it's a, it's a little bit of a, um, well, it, it's an important role because we're almost, we're almost like advocates between our BNI members and the corporate world. But we also work in partnership because we can help give feedback. They can come up with new ideas and, and together we can shape the organization what's best for everybody. Is it safe to assume that this is not just something that somebody says, oh, I want to be in the founder circle and just sort of says, I'm in? Like, you've got to be invited, right? 
It is by invitation only, and there's certain criteria. Like you have to, your regions have to have a track record of success for a certain amount of time. Uh, you have to be an executive director or a franchise owner for a certain amount of time. Um, you have to be in good standings. You have to have all of your um, all of your ducks in a row, and then you might get a tap on the maybe you might get a tap on the shoulder. So so. Again, Lawrence has spent the last few minutes telling us how he's not really good at anything, but he's won several awards. He gets invited to speak on a global stage. He was invited to the Founder Circle of PNI. So I think his track record speaks contrary to the fact that he doesn't think he's good at anything. But maybe if you don't think you're good at anything, then maybe this business networking is exactly where you could thrive. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's a takeaway. Now, Lawrence, let's get into our topic. Now, we were talking before we started recording the episode today like, okay, let's talk about what is business networking and what is it not. And sort of tongue in cheek, we said, well, we're not talking about when you connect multiple computers on the internet or multiple computers inside an office. That's networking, but that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about um, what I, network marketing, I guess is what you call it, where you have like um, multi level uh, marketing companies and that's sort of the um, method of getting your product out there. We're talking about something else entirely, something that is way more fun and passionate for you and probably more relatable for a lot of people. But let's just define it. If, you, if someone came up to you and said, okay, Lawrence, I know you're really into this thing that's called business networking, but what is it? How do you answer that question? Yeah, so I think many of us have heard the, the phrase in business, it's, it's all about who you know. Or when, when you're getting a job, you know, it's all about who you know. Those, those personal connections that you have are what help you advance in your career or your business or whatever. Um, and so networking is more or less the way that you build those relationships. You get out into the world, you meet people, you get your name out there, but, but not necessarily with the intent to sell something. Right. When you're networking, the goal is to build mutual win-win relationships with, at first, strategic, maybe trade partners or uh, strategic business alliances, but in the end with, with everybody. You know, the, the relationship is key. People like to do business. People like to work with somebody where there's a level of trust mm -hmm. there, right? And so... The more that you build that trust with people, the more you're able to uh, start channeling those, those leads or um, start creating strategic referral relationships with people where you're going to get ongoing business over and over and over again. And so we learn that as being more like relationship selling as opposed to transactional selling. If you... If you're always meeting people, looking at people with the mindset that this is my new friend, this is my new buddy, this is who I could potentially be working with for the rest of my life, you, you come into every interaction a bit differently. If you have the mindset that, that this is a transactional approach, you don't have that long lasting impression like, what is this person going to think about me tomorrow? You know, is this person going to like me enough where they're going to talk to their aunt or their uncle or their friend down the street and let them know about my services, right? If something is just a transactional uh, sale, we're not thinking long term. And that's, it's, it's, it's extremely hard. It's, it's not as sustainable. Um, and for trades especially, it can be quite damaging, mm -hmm. right? Um, whereas if you come in with the approach that, I'm now friends with this person for the rest of my life. How are our interactions going to go? You know, how, how am I going to invest my, my time and my energy in, in this person's needs? What is, the, what is the, the listening technique that I'm going to take so that I can understand how this person could potentially need me or how this person um, could need something else that I could potentially help them with? So... So networking is really important in that, in that approach where you're not going to meet someone to sell them something. You're going to meet that person to build a relationship per, and if possible, help them with something that they have in their life because eventually at some point they will maybe need something from you or know somebody that needs something. So, um, so the more people that you have that relationship with, 
the stronger your network is and the more valuable your network is too. Okay. So I'm going to tell a story here that I think I've shared with you before. I don't think most people listening will know this story. I was invited to a BNI meeting, a business networking meeting, um, many, many years ago. I'm going to probably embarrass myself trying to do the math in my head, but it's probably a good 10 plus years ago. And I had just recently started my accounting practice. I was starting up from scratch and I was invited to uh, this BNI meeting out in Spruce Grove area. And it was meeting at a, a restaurant in, a, in an upper floor of another building. And I remember going to this meeting having a lot of int- like fear. I was like, I don't know how to talk to people. I kind of related to what you said at the beginning. You know, I'm an introvert. I don't, I don't like talking to people. I'm not good at talking to people. I get into a crowd and I just kind of have the, have the, like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. So the meeting started, I don't remember, we'll call it 7.30 in the morning. I got there in plenty of time. Like, I like to be early. I couldn't bring myself to go in. I sat in the car in the parking lot for like 15 minutes trying to talk myself into, okay, you can do this, Corey. You can do this, Corey. Just go in. Just go do it. I went in and it was nothing like I had conjured in my head of this like negative, horrible experience. It was a wonderful experience. But getting myself to actually go, getting my, even when I got myself up in the morning to drive there, just getting myself out of the car and walking in was terrifying and I don't even know if I can identify all the reasons why but I have a feeling I'm not alone in that so if somebody's listening to this podcast and saying okay I get I get it Lawrence I I get that this is a going to be a crucial thing to grow in my business I get it's not about selling but the thought of talking to people I don't know maybe they're going to ask me questions that I don't know how to answer maybe they're going to ask me to tell them about my business and I don't have that spiel prepared how do we overcome that fear, that anxiety? Because I can't imagine that's a unique thing. I imagine that's a pretty common feeling. What what counsel advice suggestions would you give to somebody who kind of is feeling that sort of fear and dread about that idea? Yeah, I think that's super common. Uh, and and I remember the the same thing. I I had been to other networking events and socials and things, and and I struggled. Uh, I didn't like them, and. Um, one of the things that I, I don't I don't have this I have this like anxiety about is is when when people are trying to sell me something. And so I'd been to events and things where it was like high pressure sales and they need you to sign up and 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 boy I didn't I didn't like that. And and I later learned that uh, the key to really deciding what type of networking or 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 any of that is it's it's really about education and learning. And and nowadays uh, there's so much great information out there on on YouTube, and so if I were to give advice to anybody who's you know feeling that that fear of talking to people and, and getting in front of people, uh, I think the key is to 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 educate yourself first, right? To understand what those events are, to to understand that most of those people in the room are feeling some level of worry <laughs> and stress and fear at the same time. I think uh, I think it's it's common knowledge that uh, the fear of speaking is one of the most popular, most common fears that are out there. And uh, when you have to get up in front of people and present on who you are and what you do, yeah, that's that's tough. Like that that takes a lot of courage to be able to do that type of stuff. But if if it is something that you worry about, I promise if you if you actually prepare a little bit ahead of time practice in a mirror, record yourself on a phone, and uh, you end up being your your biggest critic, uh, you know, prepare those things, work through them a few times, practice a few couple lines, um, be aware that you're in the same situation as most of the people there. And, and as you as you prepare yourself and you do a little bit of the homework, watch a few of those YouTube best practices videos on networking or speaking or meeting new people, um, it, it'll give you that confidence to get up and do it. And <clears throat> it it doesn't have to be particularly, um, you don't have to be the best at it right away. Uh, one of one of the things that I learned is if, if you go in and you set a goal, um, you achieve that goal, that gives you permission to leave. <laughs> so <laughs> so if, you're, if you're going to a networking event and, and you're a little bit worried about it, make a goal to meet three people, 
to get three people's cards once you've done that go home you know or if you had success doing that uh, maybe your goal is to meet 10 people to get 10 new business cards new contacts once you've done that go home because once once you've set a goal for yourself it allows you to focus your mindset on it and then also kind of give yourself a little bit of an out when you've accomplished that goal. So That's a cool idea. Um, Where were you when I needed that 10 well, years ago? Those are things that, that you know, we, we don't think about. We just hear about, oh, I'm a business professional. i got to go meet people. Or networking is important, but I don't know how to do it. And, and they don't teach a lot of that stuff in school. Like, and, and, and that's one of the hardest things about business. Like, you, you could be an amazing accountant or you could be an amazing electrician. But that's nothing unless you know how to share that with people unless you need and you know how to promote that to people uh you could be you could be the best flooring installer in the world but if you don't know how to talk to people it doesn't matter right nobody's gonna know um and so education is key and there's there's tons of free education out there and and there's there's classes and there's there's professionals and there's things that you can pay for and that you can buy uh, and, and maybe once you've exhausted all the free resources out there, yeah, take a look at that. And, and organizations too, right? Like there's, there's a few different organizations out there. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce is really good at that. Yeah. They love to, to teach and put on events. Um, there's, there's organizations here in the city. And then there's um, you know, paid organizations like BNI and, um, and other breakfast clubs and things that you can, you can they, they teach you how to do that. So uh, the biggest thing is just, is is knowing that a lot of the people are in the same situation as you, doing a little bit of homework and prep work ahead of time, and and that'll really help boost your confidence to get out there and do it. Some great suggestions. Now, one of the things that you said in kind of conjunction something you said earlier, I don't know if other people are going to feel this way or have this thought, but maybe we'll just dive into that for a second. You said that it would be good if you practiced at home in front of a mirror, recording yourself on your phone to get comfortable with the speaking. But we also said that we're not going to these meetings to sell ourselves. Mm-hmm. So what is it that we should be saying? What if? Because and, and I'll speak to B and I because that's what I have uh, most familiarity with, and obviously you do as well. You get a chance, depending on what chapter meeting you go to, to have anywhere between thirty seconds and a minute to, you know, present your business or yourself or your ploy of the week or whatever it is to the other people in the room. And it would be a very common uh, temptation to use that time to produce a quote unquote sales pitch. But if that's not what you're there to do in that one minute that you're practicing or when someone comes up to you, what is it that you should be doing? What What is it that you should be practicing? Yeah, so, so you, um, that 30 seconds or the 45 seconds, or sometimes it's referred to as an elevator pitch, that's important because uh, people need to be aware of what you do but you don't necessarily need to sell what you do, right? So when somebody says, hey, what do you do? And you just say, I'm an electrician, right? Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna draw a lot of assumptions about that or, oh, I'm in marketing. Oh, I own a print shop. Great, <laughs> so how does that add value to the relationship? And so I, I use that word value quite a bit because that's, I think, the key when you're networking is, is you're trying to find commonalities and you're trying to find ways that you could potentially add value to who that person is that you're talking to. Okay. And so you're not necessarily selling yourself, but at the same time, what you're doing is you're trying to uh, convey a message of that you can add value to who this person is and you could potentially help them with what they need. But we need to identify what it is that they need first. Okay, so when you ask about what type of things you prepare for, what uh, asking really good questions is so important. And then being able to listen to the responses of what that person says without rushing to, you know, waiting for them to finish talking so you can start talking again or waiting for them to finish just so you can get your point across. Like truly intentionally listening to what they're saying identifying maybe things that you have in common with them. So asking some common questions. Oh, you know, how long have you been in that industry? Or what drew you into that industry? Or, or why do you do what you do? Or what are, what are the passions that get you out of bed every morning to, to go out and save the world from all the bad contractors out there? Or, <laughs> or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, again, those types of things take practice. To be able to continue a conversation, to do that, that light chit chat or shooting the breeze or, or those things where for some people it's very hard mm-hmm. to be able to maintain and keep keep a conversation going uh so again those 
those are things that take practice where you could maybe have four or five of the same questions practiced ahead of time. So when you're talking to somebody, uh, you can start identifying uh, who they are as an individual or, you know, are they brand new at what they're doing? Maybe they need Maybe they need some help or maybe need some advice or maybe they've been in the industry for a really long time. Oh, that's that's amazing. You know, I'd love to learn more about you and 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 how you do what you do. Uh, so uh, but then but then you also have to be prepared for then when they ask you questions <laughs> in return. And so if if you don't have good answers to those types of questions, you're, you're not going to be interesting. You're not. You're not going to be able to portray that value that you believe that you have for whoever you're talking to. So, so having that pitch ready or having answers already prepared in your mind for commonly asked questions. Uh, and, and another thing that we haven't really touched on yet, but, but is very important. We, we talked a little bit about trust and, and how that's powerful, but you're also trying to identify your, your credibility to that person. Hmm. You know, it, what, do they believe that you can do what you say you can do, you know, or, you know, if you say that you're a sewing master, how are you going to prove that? Right. <laughs> so maybe having some good success stories or some, some funny stories or, 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 um, having at the tip of your tongue, some of those accomplishments and things that you've done that are, that you're able to, to add some credibility to what you're saying. You know, if, if you say, Oh, I'm a, I'm a fantastic accountant or I've been in the accounting world for a long time and we actually just won an award for some of the things that we've been doing. You know, those are things that, that add credibility to who you are. Um, so, so it's kind of like bragging, but not in a bragging way. Is that a fair to say? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to be a one upper or you don't have to be kind of a jerk about it or anything, but uh, whenever you can, whenever you can tell a story that identifies some success or some achievements, um, then then that's painting a picture of who you are to that that person, and, and allowing them to identify. Ooh, that that's interesting. I I like to learn more or whatever. You reminded me of something. Um, I don't remember the terminology, so I'm I'm not I'm inclined not to try and butcher it. But story uh, s- storytelling um, was a key part of this, and so. If you don't feel like you have anything to to say that's like like fun or like out like eye catching or ear catching, just think back to the experiences you've had. Um, that and then just share those as stories. And I, I think I mean you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think sharing a powerful story um, experience is way more impactful on a potential client than selling to them. Right. That that story makes you relatable. It makes you real. It makes you like, oh, you know, this is not just someone who comes here putting on a, a good show, pretending to be the best at their chosen profession. They they're real. And is that is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And and what stories do is they help create an emotional connection. And that's what people will uh, remember or that's that's what will linger with them afterwards when when they've. When they've been able to make that connection with you because of that story that you were able to tell, uh, anytime it's relatable or anytime that emotional connection is there, then they're going to remember you. Um, and, and you know, some of the, the greatest speakers, some of the greatest um, inspirational uh, trainers, they, they often, almost always, I would say, use stories to help relay what they're trying to say um, because those are the things that that stick with us. And, and even if, if for those of us that are everybody that's listening, if you think of your, your favorite teachers in school or professors in university, it's often those stories that they told about the situations that you remember most about them and who they are. Uh, so those stories are always a really powerful way to impact whoever's listening. So in part of the prep work that you talked about, if, if you're getting ready to go to a networking event, part of that preparation would be thinking through to yeah. remember, what have I done? What have I accomplished? Mm-hmm. Or maybe even go back to the, why on earth did I pick this profession in the first place? Mm-hmm. It probably wasn't just I threw a random dartboard and said, I'm going to be an electrician or whatever. It's a, I, I have a passion for this, or I really want to run my own business because I saw how it shouldn't be done. And I wanted to be an example of the way it should be done or could be done or whatever. And that going back to that, like, well, you know, tell me why you did this in the first place. That can be a powerful story in itself. 
And everyone, almost everyone has a, a story of why. Why did you go into this? Why did you start your own business? Why, Even if you don't think it's an interesting story, it, it probably is going to be a crucial story when you go to these kind of networking events. Um, now, again, let's go back to this elevator pitch that, as you call it, if I only have 30 to 45 seconds to get my most important point across and it isn't, hey, we have a special this week on X or man, do we have a deal for you? Act now. Like items are going fast. What do I spend that 45 seconds doing? How, how do I make the most of that 45 seconds? Yeah, I think finding what makes you different than everybody else or gives you maybe a competitive advantage is is what's going to differentiate you from the next person. And and being able to focus on it, you're, you're never going to be able to tell everybody all the things, all your services and products and everything that you carry or do in your in your that amount of time. But being able to um, to convey the message that you are uh, a little bit better or maybe a lot better than your competitors. And this is the reason why. Uh, so if you're a mechanic, you know, one of the things that we see is a lot of mechanic shops are filthy and dirty and right. And so maybe that's your competitive edge, you know, our squeaky clean service bays. Uh, and so, you know, I'm a mechanic. Uh, I've actually been doing this for a lot of years. You know, one of the things that we really pride ourselves is the way that we keep our shops clean, organized and uh, always ready for our next customer every day of the week. And and so being able to just identify and differentiate uh, is really going to set you apart. And then like what I mentioned before, if you're asking those questions and say, you know, what are the pain points that you guys see as in a mechanic shop? You know, here's some of the things that we've identified that we're really trying to work towards or, or get ahead of in our market to really change the way that uh, people think about their mechanics in that relationship. So right now you've just created uh, a thinking point for the person that you're talking to and asking the good questions and then listening to the responses, which then allows you to learn and to get better, but then to be able to cater to the next uh, question or concern or whatever that they bring up, because you've you've kind of started inducing this thought-provoking conversation that's a little deeper than, oh yeah, I'm a mechanic, we can do all the mechanic stuff that you would normally think of, right? That's, that doesn't, doesn't tell us anything, that doesn't create a conversation, nothing. Um, so, so yeah, the, uh, the elevator pitch um, is important. You have a short amount of time to be able to, to create a conversation that then can later lead to maybe follow-up meetings, connecting in the future, contact information that you can maybe send updates, win-win type of conversations, newsletters, that type of stuff you find online, you could share with them. It, just whatever, you know, any anything that you can use to open up the door. And um, and I should also say that that these are things, tools, skills that are not necessarily exclusive to networking events. Hmm. These are things that you can you can do on your own. And so, you know, if you're a if you're a, a, a company that does maintenance, snow shoveling, whatever, and you finished a job at a, somebody's house and you. Um, you go in to collect money or whatever, and you you start to chat with that person. You get to know them, and they're like, "Oh, you know, I'm a I'm a business analyst. Oh, that's that's interesting. You know, I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Hey, maybe we could do a, a coffee or something one time, and um, and we can chat about. It. That's networking. Right now, all of a sudden, your your transactional type of sale has turned into an opportunity to build a relationship with somebody, not to sell them anything. To learn about who they are, to identify maybe what ways you could potentially help them, maybe what networks they have. Maybe by doing that, you they take you up on that offer, you get to know them, you find out that you have a lot of things in common. As they get to build that relationship with you, guess what they're going to do? They're going to go talk about it with everybody else, mm -hmm. right? And so now you've, you've opened up a door for that, but maybe you potentially need those types of services that they have. Maybe you learn something that you could then help in your business, right? You just never know. Um, but we often just shut the door to that. Oh, here's your service. Here's your product. Thank you very much for the money. Call me when you need something like that, right? Uh, we never think about who really that person is and 
how we could potentially help them even more or hey maybe through that that contact you're able to to talk to them more about your services and they're like oh i didn't know you did lawn care in the summer or i didn't know you did gutter cleaning right uh so yeah the skills that we we practice to network are things that we can do every day you've reminded me of two things the first it's going to seem unrelated but there's a tie in here I don't watch a lot of TV most of the time, largely because I have a jillion responsibilities and I don't really have the time. I sometimes wish I did. But this concept of binge watching, especially since the advent of Netflix and Disney Plus and all that stuff, like pretty common thing. The only show that or the main show that comes to my mind when I think of something that I binge watched was 24. <laughs> so I didn't watch it when it came out originally. I watched it with my wife probably five years ago. Uh, when, when we were watching it on Disney Plus. And it's the first show that, because something you'll learn about me or people get to know about me drives me crazy, drives my wife crazy, drives my whole family crazy, is that I sit down to watch something on TV and within about 10 minutes, I'm asleep. It's so annoying. Even if it's like a high adventure show, I'm just, something about sitting in front of a TV or whatever, I just, my body just like, oh, it's time to sleep. This was the first show. This show watching 24 is the first show where I'd get to the end of an episode. And I'm like, well, I can't go to bed now. What's the next one? Like they left it on a cliffhanger. We'll just watch one more. And you watch one more. Oh, I can't go to bed now. They just left it on a cliffhanger. So why do I mention this? Well, I think part of the challenge that people think is incorrectly is when they get into that 45 second elevator pitch environment, they got to tell them everything or they got to tell them the entire piece of a story. And maybe it'd actually be a more powerful use of that time to leave it on a cliffhanger. To, if you want to know more, reach out. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and like like you said, we're, we're busy. It's hard to have time for, I guess, really anything these days. Uh, but one of the ways that we can we can do that, we're we're never going to be able to tell everything or share everything or become bestest buddies at the end of one conversation. But one of the tools that we have now that I really think is underutilized, especially for my generation and older, is the ability to continue um, building and nurturing a relationship by using social media. Okay. Right? And so, um, you know, connecting with, with new contacts and things on LinkedIn and touching base with them every now and then, or when they have an update, liking and commenting on those things. And, uh, and, and one of my, one of my favorite, I, I guess, kind of success stories with this, um, and, and I, and I, and I bet Janice will, will listen to this and, and see this, uh, a friend of mine, Janice Baskin, uh, we've known each other for probably seven or eight years. Okay. Um, but it's interesting. We had built a relationship through social media and then about five years after we had originally connected on social media, we actually met like in real life and actually had a conversation. And we, we had stopped kind of halfway through the conversation. I was like, Janice, I think this is like the first time that we've ever actually talked in real life together. <laughs> and we didn't even quite realize it because um, we, had, we had kind of quickly connected at an event. We got connected on social media and then we've just been keeping up with each other's posts and comments and likes and life updates and all that kind of stuff, watching each other's videos and, uh, and then realize that we had, we had built this, this relationship where we're very familiar with what's going on in our lives and a lot of the common things that we have and, and stuff, but, but not in real life. And, and you can maintain and be able to continue building those relationships uh, through social media way more than you ever could before. Um, I worked with about 650 BNI members across the country. There's no way that I would be able to, to, to give every amount of time that, that I would have loved to with each person to build those relationships, but through posts and through videos and by taking 20, 30 minutes a day, just kind of scrolling different feeds and, and seeing what people, then, then when I did see those individuals in, in real life, I felt connected to them. I mean, if you think about it, we feel connected to all these famous celebrities and everything, but we've never met any of them, <laughs> right? But we feel like we have a relationship with them because of what we experience with them online, 
right? And there, there's no reason why we can't do that as well. Um, so if you meet someone at a networking event and you get them a, get a card, when you get back to the office or in a couple of days, just send them a quick email. Just be like, hey, you know, thank you. Wow, it was great to meet you. Um, I really appreciate the conversation that we had about this and this and this. I've been thinking about it lately. It reminded me of an article that I read a couple weeks ago. I just wanted to share it with you, right? How nice is that? And then you go onto LinkedIn and you, then you like or follow them or whatever. Yeah. Get connected with them. When they connect with you, hey, thanks for connecting. Yeah, I really appreciate it. You know, it's it's uh, great to meet people like you. And if you ever need anything, I'm happy to to explain what we do. But I would love to book a coffee with you with some time. And I say that. I don't even drink coffee. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, go and, and meet with you and connect with you and just learn more about who you are and what you do. And... Uh, and then, and then, yeah, just comment on what they have or, you know, send them, send them information that might be of value to them through, through the social media platforms. And as you do that, you build those relationships. Maybe you become friends on Facebook or follow them on Instagram or uh, if you like any of the social um, platforms out there. It, you can really, really nurture a relationship with, you know, just little touch points here and there that don't, don't necessarily take a lot of time. Yeah. Um, which, which I think are, which I think are important. The more that you can give without ever asking in return, if you do absolutely need something, then you've, you've established that relationship. So I have a couple of quotes here that I'm going to read a couple of them now, because you just reminded me and led perfectly into a couple of these. Now I need to preface this by saying in BNI, um, particularly, unless this has changed, the most prestigious award that you can be given in BNI is what they call the Giver's Gain Award. Is that still the case? So if I understood this, and I don't know if this is what they would define it as on the website, but the way I took this award was this person would go into a networking situation or conduct themselves in networking events, focusing more on the other people. How can I give to them? How can I help them? far more than they're worried about, I hope it comes back to me. And so they're more focused on giving than on gaining, with the irony being that when my focus is on helping others, it naturally comes back to me and it's a way stronger friendship, it's a way stronger relationship, and it's way more fulfilling. So let me just read some of these quotes here that kind of remind me of that. This one by Dale Carnegie, I, I don't know for sure, I think it's from his book, How to Win Fl Friends and Influence People, but it says this, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. And I was like, yeah, bang on with that. Now, here's another one. The successful networkers I know, the ones receiving tons of referrals and feeling truly happy about themselves. Before I read the rest of this quote, I just have to say, who doesn't want to be in any of those boats? Successful, receiving tons of referrals, feeling truly happy. Uh, yeah, sign me up. Okay, so if that's how you want to be, I'll go back and read this quote. The successful networkers I know, so the ones receiving tons of referrals and feeling truly happy about themselves, continually put the other person's needs ahead of their own. So, and I will tell you from personal experience, this approach, not only is it a better approach, I found it helps to quell some of the anxiety and some of the fear. And so I'm going to walk into that networking event way more concerned about how can I help this person I'm going to meet? And how can I make this person's day? And how can I help this person's business? Um, and not really even stressing about, oh, I hope I get a sale out of this, or I hope I get a client out of this, or I hope it's somehow the return on investment's good. Um, and going in with that approach of how can I help the other person, um, it took away a lot of my anxiety. It took away a lot of my fear. So I don't know. Do you have any thoughts or comments on that? Yeah. Um, because the, the fear is the fear of rejection. And so if you're not going to sell anything, you're not going to be rejected. Right. And so, so it can reduce that fear when you know that, that you're just going there to make friends. Yeah. You're going there to build relationships. And when you were talking, uh, it reminded me of a funny story where you, even, even as much connecting and as much meeting new people, it still, it still makes me nervous. 
And so <clears throat> I, I went to a Chamber of Commerce event and I was chatting and I was, you know, eating all the, I, I was chatting with some of the people that I already knew and eating some of the, the appetizer things that they had there. And, and I only had about an hour to be there. And so I was hanging out mostly with all the people that I already knew and just kind of socializing. And, and I thought to myself, I was like, uh, you know, I tell people all the time about meeting new people and connecting. And I'm like, and I'm not even doing any of that. <laughs> I'm just hanging out with the people that w- it was comfortable, right? It was comfortable. I wasn't, I wasn't breaking out of my bubble or anything. And so I thought to myself, I thought, you know, how, how can I profess to, to be a networking master if I'm not even networking myself at a networking event? (laughs) And so I thought, you know, just like I was mentioning before, I'm I'm going to talk to at least one person. Then at least if somebody asks me about it, I can be like, oh yeah, I was chatting with this person, you know, (laughs) just kind of save face. Uh, so, um, so right before I left, I, I, uh, there was, there was a gentleman who was just kind of standing by himself and, and sipping on his drink and whatever. So, I, so I just went up to him and I was like, Oh, Hey, I saw that you're standing by yourself. And, uh, I, uh, uh, I wanted to just kind of meet you and say hi. And, uh, if I could learn a little bit about what you do and he's like, Oh yeah, great. That'd be fine. And he actually was an accountant. Uh, he was new at his firm and he <laughs> was sent to this event by his firm to try to help him get out of his shell, meet new people, <laughs> you know, get out in the community. And he was struggling with it. And I was like, ah, oh, how perfect is this? I can now use some of the things that I know to help this individual in his particular circumstance. And then he ended up accepting an invitation for me to come and meet some of the business professionals that I did because there was another network. We were having like a, a visitor event at one of our BNI meetings. And he accepted the offer to come and meet and uh, ended up being super good for him, meeting all these people. He got back to his office and he became like a, in like a success story for them. Oh, yeah, see these new people? We send them out into the world and they come back. And, and so as funny as it was, I think, um, I think it helped me understand that, yeah, you know, I can offer a lot of value. Uh, this person didn't buy anything from me. I didn't buy anything from them, but because of this relationship, we both kind of benefited from it. Right. And, uh, and, and I, I often, when I'm, when I'm training and teaching, I refer back to this because it, it goes back to, you, you know, you never know, you never know who it is that you're going to meet. You never know who it is that they know and, and, and what can come from that relationship. So just, so just go and just talk to them, you know? And, and like, like you said, there's that fear there, but if, if you're not actually trying to sell anybody, it, it completely changes your tone, your mindset, yeah. the entire situation that the pressure kind of comes off of you. I, I actually posted a link on, or sorry, uh, a post on LinkedIn the other day, inviting people to lunch. I said, hey, I'd like to buy you lunch. I promise not to sell you anything if you promise not to sell me anything. <laughs> That's what I put right on the post. <laughs> And, uh, and I, I actually had some people comment and be like, okay, like it, it, it t- completely took the pressure off, yeah. you know, be- because what's, what's, that's kind of like code, right? If somebody's like, Hey, I'll buy you lunch. It's just like, I want to pitch you something. Uh-huh. I want to give you a presentation. And I, I don't know, I don't want any of that. <laughs> I just want to get to know you. Right. I want to build my network here and I want to be that guy that knows the person to help you with what you want. And of course, if we have that relationship, when you do need something, sure, come and talk to me. I'd be happy to help, right? Um, but that's that's not what the priority is. The priority is, is being able to make that connection, go and talk to them, find out what they need, and see if you can help them with it. Yeah. Okay. So you bring up, I think, two related important points. Um, the first, is, and these are actually both Ivan Meisner quotes, but... Uh, so again, Ivan Meisner is the founder of BNI. I figured it was like, a, if I could surprise Lawrence, maybe I'll just throw in a lot of Ivan Meisner quotes because he probably <laughs> likes the guy by now, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, two things that Lawrence brought up that really reminds me of these quotes. So first one, again, from Dr. Ivan Meisner. First, you have to be visible in the community. You have to get out there and connect with people. It's not called net sitting. It's not net eating. It's called networking. You have to work at it. So... And we'll dive in more of this in the second quote. This is not a quick fix. This is not a go in and act like I got my crap together and 
I'll come out with a sale. This, this is this is an investment. This is work. This is sometimes hard work, but will pay off. So that leads into the second quote. Networking is not about hunting. It's about farming. It's about cultivating relationships. Don't engage in premature solicitation. You'll be a better networker if you remember that. So those are both Dr. Ivan Meisner quotes, but go back to the beginning of that quote. Networking is not about hunting. It's about farming. What do you think that he means by that? Yeah, so in the business world, in the sales world, when you're hunting, you're you're putting all of your time and focus and effort on individual kills, right? And you, you eat what you kill. With farming, what you're doing is you're you're planting thousands and thousands of seeds, and over a long period of time of cultivating and being able to nourish that growth, then you're able to reap what you sow. But it is absolutely a long-term game, right? And then when you also think about it, when you're hunting, uh, you're specifically targeting one thing at a time, and then that thing is done, and it end is, ends. With farming, it's, it's constant. Year after year after year, you're being able to, to have a harvest of the planting. But getting a field or a farm or whatever ready for that takes a lot of time, a lot of investment, and a lot of work. But in the end, you're going to get way more out of it. So do we have that long-term approach? Are we willing to invest a lot of that time at the beginning? Um, that, that's what people have to decide on their own. And, and some people get it. They understand that. They are they're connectors. They are good relationship builders. And some people do not. Right? They, they do and they sell a job. And then they look up and they're like, oh, darn, I don't have anything to do right now. I better go get another job. Right? And so then what happens is, is you start to sacrifice um, potentially quality. You, you, you start to sacrifice your ability to maintain employees. You have that turnover. Uh, and, and then also, too, it, it doesn't create a sustainable business because you do something and then you run out of work and then you go get something else and then you start again. Uh, and, and for if you ever want to if you want to run or expand or grow your business, you're not going to ever have a good level of employees that are going to be able to to live with that mm -hmm. situation. And so you need to be constantly building that funnel uh, it, through, through lots of different marketing channels and everything, but, but networking is super important because closing rates on, on referrals and people that you have relationships or existing or past clients, closing rates on those are way higher. Um, so, so the more that you're able to feed that type of business into your, uh, your sales funnel, um, the, the higher likelihood of closing, uh, those referrals goes up. Okay. So I think people listening to you are going to possibly be wondering, um, how do I have time for that? Now, every episode of this podcast we've done so far has at some point naturally led back, and maybe that's just because we're live minds had a lot of time, to Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. <laughs> we've actually talked about numerous of the principles in that book already accidentally on this podcast. We talked earlier about uh, what he would call thinking win-win. You don't walk into a situation and be like, it's all about me or... I'm going to win at the expense of you losing. It's We're going to go into this relationship where we're exploring ways where you can win and I can win. And this is a mutually beneficial thing. Um, you talked about what he would call um, listening uh, before you speak. Uh, I'm wording it different than he had. But um, the idea that when you're listening to other people, you got to listen to understand before you're understood. Right. So we talked about that. And then we're talking about here one now. So maybe your answer to my question or this objection I'm going to bring up is uh, going back to another one of his principles that uh, he would talk about sharpening the saw. But if I'm a one person business owner and I'm marketing and I'm tech and I'm sales and I'm HR and I'm the operation, I do everything. I'm struggling to stay above water. Mm. I'm struggling to tread. How on earth do I justify and or find the time to do business networking, especially when we've identified that this is not a quick fix. This is not a, oh, I've got seven minutes. I can go to a networking event and I'm good to go. Like This is a long-term 
a lot of work, investment, and time. If I'm a one-person show, how do, how, how do I how do I do that? How do I find that time? Yeah, I find that if you if that's your goal, and if you want to build those relationships into network, then you have to either well, and maybe set goals and schedule it in. But one of my favorite things to do is to team it up with things that you're already doing. Example. Example. So, for instance, if if you want to build a relationship, we have to eat. When you're going to eat, or when you're going to get a coffee, or a drink, or whatever, why don't you invite somebody to come with you? Sort of like your Facebook posting image. Well, sure. Right. We we have to do those things. Um, and then and then set the boundaries for for your work days and your balance and everything with your family life and then and then squish them in in between before middle or after so a lot of like breakfast clubs and stuff those are first thing in the morning right before the work day starts okay so we can squeeze that in before we need to open our restaurant or you know office doors open at 9 a.m well go from seven o'clock until 8 30 or or right after right we we have to eat dinner right so uh, maybe once a month or twice a month, you decide that you want to eat dinner with somebody else or invite them over to your house for dinner for a friend. You know, most of us uh, will take breaks, whatever, coffee breaks, those types of things. Why not? Why not quickly scroll through your social media during that time and connect with a couple of people, send out a few conversations. Uh, so we already are going to be taking a break. We're already going to be eating lunch. We are going to be doing those things. So why not do it at the same time as something else? Uh, but again, what I said before with scheduling it in and estimating it, or sorry, and setting goals, if we identify that what we're doing is an investment into our business and part of what we need to do for success, then just like anything, doing our taxes or um, sending out those invoices, those are all things that we have to do as business professionals. This is something that you're going to have to schedule it in or it's not going to happen. So if your goal is to meet five new people a month, then that means you're going to need to schedule in 20 minutes or an hour every week to actively prospect to find those people or to attend those events. Maybe, maybe you're like, oh, I need to meet five new people this month. I know if I attend that networking event or that chamber event or that home builders event or whatever it is, I will do that. Or maybe I'll, I'll, I'll attend a trade show. There's tons of people there that are standing in their booth that want to talk to me. I'll attend one of those. I'll meet five new people. So if you set those goals, then you'll find that you'll be able to manage your schedule accordingly. If it's always something that's Oh, yeah, I need to do that. Oh, yeah, I should probably do that. Oh, I'm, I know that's important, but you never actually put it into your schedule. Then it's always going to be pushed aside by what is happening right now every day. And it, and it won't ever happen because it's one of those things that we know is important, but isn't necessarily high priority. Another Stephen Covey concept. Yeah, right. The time management the matrix. matrix. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and that, that, that the similar with things like our, our health, right? We know that that's important, but don't need to necessarily deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. So sometimes it can get away from us. Those types of things. Whereas if you schedule them, you set a goal and maybe combine them with other things that you're doing in a day, you'll be able to find the time for it. And once you start to see the value and that it's actually working for it, you'll be able to, to allocate more and more time for it. Wonderful. Some great suggestions Lawrence has provided. Um, piggybacking one thing he said, uh, there's a gentleman named James Clear uh, wrote a book called Atomic Habits. It's gained a fair bit in popularity. One of the things he talks about in that book is a concept he calls habit stacking. And so if I'm wanting to develop a new habit, but I just can't find the motivation or the time or the interest in doing it, I piggyback it on something I'm already doing anyways. And therefore, I'm, a, I'm already doing habit A. I just piggyback this on habit A, and then they both become habits. So your concept of well, you got to eat lunch anyways. So if you want to start doing something new like networking, you know, eat lunch while you're networking. So some great ideas there. Two last kind of concepts that I thought might be useful to talk through. Um, one is one of the objections that I, I hear a lot when a new business is starting is I've exhausted everyone I know. You know, I, I've talked to my family. I've talked to my friends. 
I don't know who else to talk to. I don't know how to grow this business beyond my immediate circle. So fair point. But again, when you invest your time into business networking, what happens is it's not just that, no, it's who I know. It's, well, all these new friends, we'll call them friends as we've talked about today, all these new friends I've just made, now it's about who they know. And so my network has gone from 25 people to now I, I've made 25 new friends and now it's the 25 people they each know. And that exponentially increases the amount of people. And again, it's not that you have to sell them anything. In fact, your best salesperson is probably going to be that person who's not really your salesperson, but will go to bat for you because they've built that relationship. So if you find yourself in a business where you're like, I've exhausted everyone I know, I've no, everyone I know either has already bought for me, is not interested, doesn't have the money, I don't know where to go from here. Business networking could be a great foray into expanding that circle of influence. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it, that is that is so important. When, when somebody comes to you and says that... Um, to me, that that means that you haven't you haven't done your job <laughs> good enough with those people because those people, if you are friends with them and you've done work with them and you have a relationship with them, you would want them hopefully to be a mouthpiece or an advocate for you in the community. So when your when your aunt who may not necessarily need your product or service but loves you and wants to support you and you have a good relationship with her, when she's when she's around her friends, you want her to be talking to her friends about you yeah. right and uh and so when you when you're sitting down at thanksgiving dinner and you're talking to your aunt you're 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 building that relationship and you're you're sharing with some of the good things that have been happening in your life you you talk about funny stories so that she can go back and share that with her network her friends her neighbors her bridge club or whatever <laughs> it is um and then, and then, like you said, her network becomes your network. And if if you have that perspective that each person can potentially have a network of fifty or a hundred or two hundred people, um, the conversations that you have with those people doesn't doesn't need to just end there. It it should be uh, the outlook should be a lot further. How you can be then connected to their network. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, the other thing that we, we don't think of, sometimes our mind is sort of so focused on the business world and networking with other business associates that we forget about our social world and how that is a network as well. And so networking doesn't necessarily have to be a chore. We can apply these skills and these tactics in, in all things. So if you love to play hockey, Right, that hockey group is now a potential network. Those are friends. Do, does every person that you play hockey with know that you own a restaurant, or do they know that you run a concrete business or something? Do they know that? Or if you if you go to church, or if you uh, if you're a mom and part of a mom's group, or on a on an education board or or teachers board or whatever, these are all now your network. And like what we said before, our goal is not to sell to each one of these people, but we have to build a relationship with them and we need to understand what it is that they do and they need to understand what it is that we do as well. And so with, with that constant mindset of adding value to who these people are, not selling them, we're, we're able to constantly be extending our network. So maybe the only thing that we do is we like to go on a motorcycle ride with a group of guys every couple of weeks, right? Well, why, why don't we invite more people to do that? Isn't that networking? Right? As we're meeting new people and connecting or we're working with a customer and we see that they have a sweet ride in their garage, why not, why not invite them to our next motorcycle ride? Right? That's, that's building our network. That's... If we were to extend an invitation to somebody else who had a motorcycle, would they ever be like, oh, how dare you? You know, <laughs> of course not. Of course not. They would be like flattered because we've invited them to something that they obviously have a passion, a passion for, yeah. right? Or an interest in, you know, I mean, hockey is a, is a very common thing where a lot of guys like to play hockey. I'm not one of those guys. Mm -hmm. I'd rather play basketball. But, um, but a few of my good friends love playing hockey. 
So if I'm meeting with somebody and I find out they love hockey, you know, like, hey, you know, a buddy of mine loves to play hockey and they're always looking for guys. Would you be interested or, you know, are you open? Like we're, we're adding value. We're building our network. Like those types of things, I think we forget about because we compartmentalize our business world and our, our social world or our other types of things that we're connected with. But that's actually not working, right? It doesn't have to be a chore either. I love the way you put that. I had a couple other thoughts of things that we could talk about, but I think we've had a, I think we've been well taught today. I, I think um, Lawrence has brought some phenomenal ideas, some wonderful stories, and some experiences. And as he said in his bio, or as I said on his bio, uh, he loves to meet new people. And uh, despite him being an introvert, he really loves it. So I would invite you to reach out to him. Now, Lawrence, um, if people want to reach out to you and connect to you, either just as friends or as a wow, this guy really knows his stuff about networking. I want to learn more. It's the best way people can get a hold of you. For sure. And and yeah, I'm happy to talk to anybody. Um, definitely an advocate of, of all types of networking. Um, so even though a lot of my experience is with BNI, uh, I, I'm still out there and attending lots of other events as well. Uh, so yeah, I can be reached e- easily through um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, just search my name, Lawrence Roberts. You'll be able to find me pretty quick, uh, especially on LinkedIn. Um, but uh, yeah, right now I'm uh, easily accessible, I guess, through phone or email or whatever. And, and if you want to put all my contact info on sure. there. Yeah, we can put that in the show notes um, so you guys can reach out to Lawrence. I would encourage you to do so, especially if, well, Again, Lawrence and I have known each other for a while and for a variety of things. We go to the same church and we both enjoy riding motorcycles and we both kind of for a while were pretty into BNI and networking. And so uh, there's a variety of things. If any of those catch your attention, I invite you to have a no strings attached for real this time lunch with Lawrence and uh, get to know him. Now, we've talked about a lot of things today. I think everything we've talked about is pretty important. But if, if you could sort of sum up or narrow it down to like if if people listening to this episode don't get anything else out of the last hour hour and a half we've had together this is what i really want them to take away what would you say Mm, i would say to get out there and meet people with the intention of helping them as opposed to trying to sell to them will go so much further in your business in your in your connecting your networking um, it, it will leave such a positive impact on the people that you are talking to. Um, it, it will do way more for your business than anything else. So um, meet with the intent to help. Wonderful. Well, then on that note, I think I'll end on a, uh, with a quote from Dr. Meisner. Um, before I do, I just want to thank Lawrence for his time today. Um, giving your time to come by and share your experience and expertise with our listeners and on our podcast. Um, So here's the quote from Dr. Meisner. You can make a good living while serving a greater good. That might sum up nicely what Lawrence just shared with us. Uh, Again, you've been listening to the Business Speak podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Chill. Uh, Grateful for Lawrence Roberts for joining us today. Uh, Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a great day. You've been listening to the Business Speak podcast featuring Mr. Chill. Be sure to subscribe and add us to your podcast library to ensure you never miss an episode. We love hearing from our listeners. If you have a topic or question you'd like us to discuss, would like to be a guest on our show, or would otherwise like to get in touch with us, please visit our website at businessspeak.ca. Thanks for listening to Business Speak, the language of business simplified simplified <laughs>